I now give the floor to Mr. Jean Pierre Lacroix. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and uh, distinguished council members. I thank you for this opportunity to brief the Security Council on the developments pertaining to the UN's interim security force for ABA, UNISFA, including its support to the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, JBVMM. I shall also update you on recent developments since its publication. <clears throat> Mr. President, despite the improving relations between Sudan and South Sudan, it remains very unlikely that progress will be made in determining the final status of the ABA area in the short to medium term. Given that the African Union Commission and the AU High-Level Implementation Panel are stretched dealing with other priorities, the enhancement of the UN support to the AU through the appointment of a deputy head of mission for UNISMA becomes more important while the Special Envoy works with the AU to seek ways to revitalize the political process. In this regard, in a positive development, on the 4th of March, UNISFA held consultations with Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok of Sudan to resolve the issues of the Atani Hair Strip and the appointment of the Deputy Head of Mission. The Prime Minister has expressed willingness to support the mission in these areas. Mr. President, at the local level, the security situation in the Abia area remains volatile, with episodes of heightened tensions between the Ngoklinka and the Miseria communities, an increase in criminality and the presence of armed elements in UNISFA's area of responsibility. UNISFA strove to contain insecurity and to keep the Abia area a weapons-free zone through rapid response and presence in sensitive areas. However, the movement of armed men reported by the local population on several occasions during the reporting period remained a source of concern. UNISFA troops have also been subject to attacks by armed elements. In the latest incident on the 24th of April in Sector Center, UNISFA forces challenged an armed Nisiria herdsman in Nainai who fired upon him. In a separate incident in the same day, also in Sector Center, a Miseria home group with automatic assault rifles engaged with UNISFA troops at the Alal post. Regarding the major escalation of violence between communities on the 19th of January 2020, in which three Miseria were killed at Nainai by attackers suspected to be Nordinka, and on the 22nd of January 2020, when 33 Nordinka were killed by Miseria armed elements at Cologne, in what is believed to be a retaliatory attack, UNISFA established a joint investigative team to conduct a preliminary investigation into the incident in the aftermath of the attack. Tensions, which had rapidly escalated, are now slowly easing thanks to the preventive deployments and engagement of the mission with the local communities. On the 16th of March, a traditional leaders' conference comprising both Nrok Dinka and Miseria Paramount Chiefs took place in Difra, Sector North. The two sides acknowledged the need for peace and agreed not to escalate the situation. A follow-up meeting with the two Paramount Chiefs took place in Difra on the 9th of April. While no agreement has yet been reached on the southern migration of Miseria herders for the forthcoming dry season, these meetings managed to bring together the traditional leaders of the two sides for the first time since the Cologne attacks in January 2020. There were also the first meetings in that format since November 2017, when the leaders met in Addis Ababa during an ABIA Joint Oversight Committee AJOC meeting. Although still insufficient to restore stability to the area, these are encouraging steps taken by the two communities. Our paramount concern is to sustain the positive dialogue restored between the two communities. Following the completion of the column investigation report by the mission, I will be discussing with the force commander what other steps may be undertaken to prevent the repetition of such incidents in the future. In other developments, the Joint Border Verification and Monitoring Mechanism, JBVMM, made some progress towards reaching the benchmark specified by UN Security Council Resolution 2497. Clear guidance for the JBVMM operational activities was provided in the outcome document of the Joint Political and Security Mechanism, JPSM, ordinary session in Juba on the 19th of February 2020. Both parties have now fully deployed a complete number of national monitors as per the agreement. Freedom of movement for aerial and ground monitoring missions was also fully guaranteed. 
the team side at Abukusa slash Monko was then successfully established on the 13th of January 2020. Mr. President, with respect to the current, to the current police, police generation process, the deployment of the three authorized FPUs expected to be on the ground by July 2020 is facing serious delays to the, due to the travel restrictions decided by the government of Sudan to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The process for deployment of the first identified FPU from Ethiopia was well advanced by early March with the completion of the pre-deployment visit to the mission area. However, all further steps had to be suspended in view of the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. Although no cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in UNISFA, the UNISFA COVID task force medical teams are visiting all team sites and sectors to verify the state of preparedness in the mission. Engineering work has been completed to establish a 16 bed quarantine area for uniform personnel. I welcome the Prime Minister's assurance that he will soon put a team together to conduct the necessary consultations with the Ministry of Defence and Intelligence for the use of the Atari airstrip. The use of that airstrip would significantly improve UNITFA's medevac capability and address its current logistical challenge. At the local level and on a daily basis, UNISFA conducts sensitization with a large section of interlocutors, including civil society, women's associations, communities coming to the different marketplaces, and dedicated meetings with paramount chiefs, judges, and prosecutors to encourage hand washing and social distancing. As a result of the discussions in detention centers, the chief criminal court decided to release 13 detainees convicted on petty crimes to help decongest the cells and to comply with the WHO guidelines on social distancing. Agencies are also in discussions with local administration on requirements for screening sites in several locations of the Abia area. While months ahead will no doubt pose new unprecedented challenges as we grapple with COVID-19 pandemic, UNISFA leadership will continue to engage with the governments of the Sudan and South Sudan to facilitate the implementation of the pending aspects of their previous agreements and the UNISFA mandate. UNISFA will also continue to play a stabilizing role in the Abiy area and along the border regions. I would thus seek the continued support of the Security Council for the Secretary General's recommendation to extend the mandate of UNISFA for a further period of six months until the 15th of October 2020. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Lacrosse for his briefing.